Amen. Get your Bibles. You know how I do it. If you remember seven months ago, get your Bibles or get your holy iPhones or Androids. And let's just lift them up right real quick. All right, just lift them up. Say this with me. Say, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Father, thank you for this opportunity just to dive into your word, to teach your word, your word that is a lamp unto our feet, shows us right where we're at, and a light to our pathway shows us where we're going. Thank you for having a plan for our life. Thank you for encouraging us and making us know that you've already paved the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be sharing the the, the word of God with you tonight. And and I'm going to be talking about, and, and I told him, he he told me what he was going to say. I said, man, it's perfect because it's going to go in line with what I wanted to talk about. Is I'm just going to be talking about victorious living. How many know that they have the victory? Now, there was a few people. I hope you know that you have the victory. That statement is not based on feelings. It's based on a truth. Let me say that again. It's not based on a feeling. Because if it was based on a feeling, we would never feel like we have the victory. We would always notice something is off. Something's not right. Well... It's going good here, but what about here? But we are faith walkers. We do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. And our faith is based on what God has said. If God said it, that what? Settles it. If God said it, that's what I'm going to build my life upon. I'm going to build my life upon his truth. When I'm up, His word is truth. When I'm down, his word is truth. When things are not going the way I want them to go, his word is truth. When, you know, and I got, you know, some of you don't know me. Most of you don't know me. I got, I got hood in me. You know, and and hood tries to come out. And you know when hood is coming out, that head tilts to the side. Like what? You start speaking in double. What, what, what? Huh, huh? You know? What'd you say? What'd you say? I mean, and, and, but the word of God that encompasses the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The word of God that encompasses the joy of the Lord that's unspeakable and full of glory is what straightens my head out. My flesh wants to go there, but his word leads me down the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I don't want to go down the path of righteousness right now. Right now, I want to handle some business. (laughs) But he reminds me who I am, and he straightens me out. He straightens me out at work. He straightens me out at home. He straightens me out in the supermarket. He straightens me out in the restaurant. He straightens me out when things go left. He straightens me out when things are not working the way I want them to work. And he reminds me. That all things are working together for good. Why? Because I belong to him. Now, let's look at some truths here. All right. Victorious living, victorious living. And I love what God, he's been working on this like series with me just to really go around and teach on victorious living. I was in, I think last year in a season of dynamic faith, dynamic faith. Faith is, dynamic faith is faith that trusts in God's truth. Then he shifted me this year, not too long ago, into victorious living, which ties into dynamic faith because you can't have victorious living without dynamic faith. All right? You got to have faith. You got to know it's coming. You got to know it's coming. You know, my son, I, I, I may have said this story before, but I, I just love this story. When he was four years old, he just turned 17 a, a couple of days ago. But when he was four, he, he looked in his father's refrigerator. I brought him to the kitchen, and he looked into his dad's refrigerator. And I said, son, what do you want? 
And he began to point out what he wanted at four years old. He wanted that. I want that. I want that. And I want that. He pointed out everything he wanted. And then he walked down the hallway to the master bedroom confidently, knowing that what he asked for, he was going to get. Why? Because he asked his father, and it was in his father's refrigerator. He goes in, he gets on, takes off his shoes, he gets on the bed, grabs the remote, turns on SpongeBob SquarePants, crosses his legs, and he lays there, never wavering, never doubting if he's going to get what he asked for. He didn't go, are you bringing it? Dad, where are you? He had confidence that what he asked for is coming, and he didn't know that his father, who was still in the kitchen, wanted to give him what he asked for more than what he wanted. Because he didn't, you never really realize how much the father loves the son. He asked in confidence, but I gave in love. Man, I put that stuff on the tray. I was so excited to walk down that hallway. And when I got there, he was smiling. I put it on the bed for him. I said, here you go, son. I was so excited to give him what he asked for. And this is what God wants to do for you. He wants you to be so deeply rooted in his love and in the victory. We just heard the song. When I see the cross, I see freedom. I want to add a verse to that. I see victory. Because he died that we might be so deeply rooted in God's love that we know whatever is for us, the devil can't do nothing about it. He's trying to frustrate you. He's trying to irritate you. He's trying to move you. But if you just stand still and be steadfast and immovable, it's coming. All right. So look at first John, the fifth chapter, first John five and four. And we're going to go through some points on victorious living. First John, not St. John, go all the way. I'm at St. John. Let's go all the way to first John, Tim. First John five and four. And, 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 And some of you may not have ever read this, but you're going to be blessed by seeing this. Look at this. For everyone born of God, catch this, everyone, somebody say everyone. All right, look at this. Everyone born of God is victorious. What is born of God? Well, the first verse, it says what is born of God. The first verse says this. It says, everyone who believes with a deep abiding trust in the fact that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. If you believe deeply and you trust in the fact that Jesus is the Christ You are born of God, which means you are reborn. You are spiritually transformed. You are set apart for his purpose. You are born of God. Well, if you're born of God, the fourth verse says, everyone born of God is victorious. But I don't always feel victorious. It doesn't matter. The scripture says you are victorious. But you don't know what I've gone through. But you're victorious. You don't know how I'm feeling. But you're victorious. You're victorious not because of anyone else but The fact that you believe in the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because of that, you are victorious. Not only are you victorious, look at this. It says you overcome the world. You will overcome. Um, the world, all that is in the world, the scripture said, is the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. I'm overcoming those things that want to separate me from God, want to separate me from my destiny. It doesn't mean I'm not going to go through them. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have those moments where I feel like I'm spiritually defeated, but the scripture already says I'm victorious and I am an overcomer. And I have to remind myself, I got to say this out loud. I got to say it. It's like when I look in the mirror, I have to tell myself, you do look like Denzel Washington. It doesn't matter what people say. Don't receive that Cedric the Entertainment statement that that person just made. Denzel, you know, you got to be able to get crazy in your faith where you begin to speak the victory because you'll never live in it until you believe it. 
I mean, you can stand in a bunch of prayer lines and people can prophesy over you and can say, oh, God is saying this about you. But until you start saying it yourself, you'll never live in it. You'll never live in the designed thing that God has over your life until you believe it. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe it, God can walk you in it and you'll sabotage it because you don't believe you should be there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You'll run away blessings that God brings into your life. And that's why sometimes you're going, well, when is God going to do it? God says, I can't do it until first you change your mindset. Because if I give it to you now where you're at, you won't, you don't even believe you deserve it. I don't deserve it. Hey, listen, I don't care what you do. It's because of the finished work of Jesus. It's not by our works that we can say, oh, I have this because of what I've done. It's because of what Jesus has done on the cross. And because there's an empty grave, I have the victory in Christ Jesus. And I'm an overcomer of the world. And this is the victory. Look at this. That has conquered and overcome the world. Our faith. Are continuing, are persistent. I love that, persistent. I'm persistent in my faith. I'm persistent in trusting God. I'm persistent in stating the things that God has said. I'm persistent in studying the word because the Bible says study to show yourself approved of God, a workman that's not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm persistent in the things that are building me up in faith. I'm not, I'm no longer persistent in the things that tear me down. I'm persistent in the things that build me up. I got to hang around folks that are going to be for me, not against me. I got to make sure that my spiritual diet and my diet that, that builds up my faith is a healthy diet. I can't just do anything because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has already declared that I have a life and that much more abundantly. All right. So everyone born of God is victorious. You need to leave here tonight and just say that I'm victorious. I know my gas tank's on E. <laughs> I may end up walking home. But guess what? Whether I get there in my car, I'm victorious, or if I got to get out and walk, I'm still victorious. Because th that doesn't determine if I'm victorious. Sometimes I go home, and I'm, and I'm already imagined, oh, I still got that piece of steak in the refrigerator. Oh, I'm already imagining. I'm going to throw it in. No, I'm not going to throw it in the microwave. I'm going to actually put it back on the skin. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to gravy it up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Mmm, man. Oh, I think there's, oh, I think we have some mashed potatoes. Oh, I'm going to get some of the mashed potatoes. I'm going to get the steak. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm, I already got it planned out. I get there and the steak is gone. And immediately my plans are ruined. And if I let it, now when I was immature, I would let it affect the rest of my night. Who ate my steak? Every time. <laughs> Why don't y'all leave my stuff alone? I'm going to start putting my name on it. But as I've matured, I've learned to laugh at that thing. I've learned to say, <laughs> devil, you ain't going to get me going there. I'll go out and buy another steak before I allow you to take me down the road of being mad and angry, stomping around the house, mad at everybody. Nope, yeah, whatever. I left. All right. I'm just going to go get another uh, piece of steak because I really want one. Let me go down. And then I'm really knocking the devil in my, hey, you all, I'm going to go get me a steak. Anybody want something? Because the enemy wants me to live in defeat of the thing. Like, you wanted that, and they don't even care for you. They don't even respect you. They knew that was yours, and they ate it anyway. Devil, I'm not even going to live there. Why? Because I have the victory and I'm going to overcome the thoughts you're trying to put on me right now. I'm going to overcome that right now. Why? Because I want to be persistent in my faith. Faith, what? Faith that Jesus Christ is my God, my Savior, my Lord. I want to be just like him. I want to act like him. All right. So persistent faith is this. Look at this. Persistent faith is faith that is never doubting 
And the way we never doubt is we live in habits that are conducive to victorious living. I learned a while ago that I had to change habits. I had to fix some habits. I had some bad habits. I loved God. I worshiped. I showed up to church, but I didn't have habits that were conducive to victorious living. I still had some bad habits that were leading me in fear, not building my faith. So I had to change my habits. So I had to sit down and really look at it. What are some of the habits? I, come up, I came up with three, and these are the three that I want to talk about tonight. Number one, habit number one, all right? Habit number one is focused in spite of amplified distractions, not just regular distractions, amplified distractions. I mean distractions that are just designed to get you off track because you've been studied, See, there's certain things you can put in front of me that have never bothered me. I didn't do them when I wasn't saved. That don't bother me. I can sit there on the table. That doesn't bother me. I can go there. That doesn't bother me. That never was my vice or that never had a hold on me. That doesn't bother me. It may bother you, but it doesn't bother me. But I've been studied by the enemy, so the enemy will never put on the table in front of me what doesn't bother me. He'll put on the table what does. I deal with rejection and abandonment because my dad left when I was 12 years old and said he was going to come back and never came back. So the moment I see in a relationship, I don't care if it's a work relationship, an intimate relationship, I don't care what kind of relationship it is. If I see you getting ready to do me, I'm going to do you before you do me. And I had that habit. Oh, they get me. Peace. I'm out. Where are you going? What, what, what's up? Nah, nah, I don't trust. Nah, see, I see. I had a habit of always thinking the shoe was going to drop. I had a habit of thinking you're going to leave or you're going to do me or you, you, all you want me for is what you can get from me. I had that feeling. I had that abandonment and rejection. That what was on the table because I was studying. So the enemy always would bring that thing up. Little things would happen to make me feel like I was discounted or wasn't worth anything. And the only way I overcame that thing as I had to give it to the Lord. Lord, I'm tired of feeling rejected. I'm tired of being abandoned. I'm tired of jumping ship. Help me. I'm tired of ruining every relationship I'm in because I feel like they getting ready to do me. So, Lord, I got a bad habit. I had to be honest with God. I got a bad habit. What's the habit? My habit is, God, I, 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 I'm always running. I'm a runner, God. Help me to be still. Even now, the enemy will amplify a distraction, and the distraction will be that feeling of rejection and abandonment in ministry, feeling of rejection and abandonment in, in, in my workplace, a feeling of rejection and abandonment. Looking for somebody to go, oh, you did good, and never getting it. Oh, you know what, that feeling of not being seen or not being heard, and that it amplifies itself at times. And when it does, I go, God, help me right now. My maturity in Christ says, God, help me right now, because I know that I have the victory in you. Focused. Focus. In Matthew's the 14th chapter. Yeah, in Matthew, thank you. In, That in Matthew's the 14th chapter, um, Jesus had just got done. You read this. He just got done feeding 5,000 men. They didn't even count the women and children. So there was over 5,000. It could have been like 10, 15,000. He fed them. And he said, the disciples wanted to send them home. He said, don't send them home. Let's feed them. (laughs) They said, Jesus, all we got is two fish. And five loaves of bread. We need to send them home. Because we ain't got enough to feed 5,000 men, let alone their families. Jesus says, sit them down and bring the fish to me. And bring the loaves to me. The Bible says Jesus blessed it and began to have them distribute out. And everyone ate. They ate till they were full. And the Bible says that they went and gathered leftovers. 
Now, I, I, I'm painting a picture here because here's a miracle that Jesus is performing right before their eyes. 5,000 men, not including women and children, their wives and their families, 5,000 men were fed and full. After that was over, the families begin to go back home. Jesus tells the disciples, go ahead of him on the ship. And he goes and spends time with the father and begins to pray. Now, remember, he just performed a miracle right in front of the disciples' eyes. Two fish, five loaves of bread, feeding thousands. In the middle, just a few hours later, the, the winds begin to blow, the rains begin to come, and the, and, and the waters are just going crazy on the ship, and the disciples are having to deal with this treacherous uh, a thunderstorm that's happening on the waters, and, and they don't know what they're going to do. And here comes Jesus, and they say it's about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Here he is. He comes walking on the water. Now, I want you to see this because Jesus could have said, waters, be still. Wind, be still. Everything stopped. And Jesus could have calmed everything down and walked out to the ship. But instead, Jesus decides to walk in the storm. I want you all to catch that. He's walking in the storm. So I want you to know something. Jesus will not always remove the mountain. He'll just give you strength to climb it. He won't always cause the storm to stop. He's just going to teach you how to handle the storm and still know you have the victory. So he's walking on the water. Look at this. He's walking on the water. They don't even know it's Jesus. Peter looks out and thinks it's a ghost. And he says, Jesus, is that you? If that's you, now... At, again, the water is going crazy. The wind is blowing. The rain is coming down hard. He said, Jesus, if that is you walking on the water, have me come out there and join you. Jesus said, come on. Jesus, uh, Peter gets out of the boat. The wind is blowing. The rain is coming down. The waters are hitting up against the ship. He gets out of the boat and Peter begins to walk on the water to Jesus. Nothing's different. But for some reason, after Jesus had already fed all those people in front of the disciples, Peter's walking on the water, second miracle in just a few hours towards Jesus. Peter gets distracted. The same wind that was blowing is now distracting Peter. The same rain that was coming down is now distracting Peter. The same water that's hitting against the ship is distracting Peter. Now, it's distracting him to the point where instead of walking by faith, he begins to have fear. And when he has fear, he begins to drown. He begins to drown. Why? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you in your storm to take your eyes off the very one that gives you the courage to walk in victory, the courage to walk in faith. Peter begins to drown and begins to go, help, help. And Jesus reaches down in the water and lifts him up and says, why did you doubt? How many more miracles do I have to perform in your life where you have a never ending, never doubting faith in me? What do I got to do for you to know how much that I love you? What do I have to do to, for you to know that I can bring you out of anything? What do I have to do to let you know that you have victorious, a victorious life? Why are you doubting me? Jesus is saying, don't you know that everybody born of God, everyone that believes that I am the Christ has victory? You have victory because you believe in the victorious one. So habit number one is stay focused in spite of amplified distractions. They'll be small sometimes. They'll be medium sometimes. They'll be large sometimes. They'll be enormous, but it doesn't matter what they are. Stay focused. Focused on the fact 
that you have victory. Habit number two is live in authority. I got to live in authority. Not only do I have to be focused, but I got to know I have the authority. I have the power. Why? Because Christ lives in me. The same one that said all power is given to me in heaven and in earth lives in me. In Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, I love what happens to the, the, the children of Israel when they come out of Egypt. Moses begins to speak to them. And this is the thing. He was trying to get out of them the slave mentality that they still had. They watched the miracles of God, just like you and I have watched the miracles of God. We've seen what God's done. You got to see that they saw God part the waters and defeat their very enemy right before their eye. But they still had a slave mentality. When he told them, take the promised land, he said, we can't take the promised land. They, there's some giants over there. He said, am I not God? Did I not feed you bird steak from heaven? Did I not open up a rock and give you water to drink while you were in the wilderness? Why are you doubting me now? Why? Because they were living in a mentality that was not equal to who they were. It's nothing worse. It's nothing worse. <laughs> My son, he lives like I work. I know my dad had my dad has a job, so I'm gonna ask. Hey dad, what's up, son? Slide 60 on my card. He doesn't go, hey, dad, do you have $60? No, mm -mm. he doesn't start it like that. He just goes, dad, slide 60 on my card. Hey, dad, me and my friends are getting ready to go. We're going to go hang out at Dave and Buster's, and I got 40. Can you slide 80? We want to have a good time. Dad, I'm headed to my friend's graduation. Could, you know, you slide. Hey, dad, you know, I want to I get my, my friend a computer. Hey, dad, he lives like I work. He doesn't live as if he works. He lives as if I work. All right. So I, I'm learning. This may be funny, but I'm learning from my son how to live as a son of God. Because my son doesn't act like he has to earn my love. My son literally lives in my love. And if I can learn anything from him, then I'm going to start living in God's love the way my son lives in my love. My son doesn't waver in the ass. Let me stop wavering in my ass. My son doesn't waver that he's a son. Man, I'm going to stop wavering in the fact or change my mindset so that I can live like my son lives, like my daddy owns the world. My daddy owns it all, all right? So in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, it says this, 13th verse, 12 and 13, it says this, the Lord will open for you, oh, I'll receive this somebody, you got to take that old mindset and put on the new, the Lord will open for you his good treasure house, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season, all right? He will give rain to your land in the sea and will bless all the work of your hands. This is the promise of God to the children of Israel. Well, that was to Israel. That's not to me. Well, the Bible says in Romans 8, through the spirit of adoption, now we have the promise that was given to Israel. Look at this. He says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure house, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you will lend to many nations. See, this is when you know you've shifted because you've gone from borrowing to lending. All right. He said, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make you the head or the leader and not the tail. And you will be above only and you will not be beneath. See, here it is. Here it is. I got to believe it so that I can live in this. I got to believe that I'm the head. I know I've been told all my life I ain't nothing but a tail. It was another word they used. 
But I've been told, look, you see how the enemy tried to condition you all your life. You've been told something and here it is now. You're living and hearing the word of God. And you go, I don't know if I can receive it because I got a, I, I, I got this junk in my attic, my attic. I got all this junk in my attic making me believe that I am the tail. But here it is. He's saying you are the head. You are the head and you are no longer the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. If you listen and pay attention, he says, listen, this is how you're the head and not the tail. This is how you're above and not beneath. If you listen and pay attention to what? My commandments. He told the disciples, if you love me, just do what I tell you. I've learned to just do what he says. I don't know other way to live. I live in accordance to what he says. So in all my ways, I acknowledge him so he can direct my steps. And I've learned how to be still until he says to move. I'm not getting in a hurry. I'm not getting ahead of God because I didn't shipwreck too many ships. I didn't crash too many cars trying to get ahead of God, trying to tell God what I think. No, God, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing without you. In you, I live, move, and have my being. I'm the head because of you. I'm not the tail because of you. I'm blessed going in because of you. I'm blessed going going out because of you. You are my shepherd. I don't lack anything because of you, God. It's not me. It's not my ability. It's not the, my education. It's not where I grew up. It's not where I work. It's not my titles. It's not anything but you. Because of you, I am. And because of you, I will be. And because of you, I have the victory. Woo, hallelujah. I have the victory. I'm no longer defeated. I'm no longer my past. I'm what God says about my future. I'm no longer beneath. I'm above. So habit number two is I got to live in that authority. If I don't know his word, how do I know his authority? I want to know when the rain is coming. I want to know how to stand still. I want to know how to be steadfast. I want to know how to have the habit of trusting that my change is going to come. I don't want to get in a hurry. I want to believe that whatever God says is coming. I want to believe it. The only way I can do that is I got to know his word. And I said it earlier, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you because my flesh want to sin. Anybody in here got it? Anybody in here deal with your flesh? It want to sin. I know we got some super Christians in here. Just, I get it. You woke up saved. You did everything. It just... Every time you sneeze, the Holy Ghost comes out your nose. I got it. But man, every day I got to put this flesh. The Bible says, Paul said it best. He says, I got to bring this flesh under subjection to the will of God. You know what the will of God is? That you have the victory. You know what the will of God is? That you live in his authority. You know what the will of God is? That you are focused when there's amplified distractions. The will of God is that you live in his providence, and you know that all things are working together for your good, that you know that in all these things, you're more than a conqueror. I don't care who's telling you, you'll never make it without me. Are you crazy? I'm making it because of Jesus. I'm I'm victorious. Who told you that? The scripture, let me show you where it says it. Because I believe in God, because I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, I'm victorious and I've overcome the world. I've overcome the things that have come to tie me down, the things that have come to defeat me, the things that have come to hurt me. I'm overcoming those things every single day and I'm not going to let my flesh lead me. I'm led by God. All right. Last habit, habit number three, all right? First habit was focused in spite of amplified distractions. Habit number two, I'm going to live in his authority, which means that divine right to rule. I have a divine right to rule. Who gave me that right? Jesus did, all right? Habit number three is this. I'm going to rest in God's yes. Now, the word rest means this. It means to depend on or rely on. I'm relying on God's yes. I'm resting in God. He has spoken a yes over my life, which means that in spite of what I see, I know I have the victory. 
So I'm going to depend on God. He did not die for me to be defeated. He died for me to have the victory. He died that I might have victorious living. All right, 2 Corinthians 1. That's how we'll end it. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter and the first verse. Oh, I just love the word of God. It just gives us the hope that we need. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Look what it says here. For as many are as the promises of God in Christ. Look at that. In, look at everything in Christ. Victory in Christ. Promises in Christ. Look at this. They are all answered yes. All the many promises that are in Christ, in Christ, the same Christ that gives me victory, the same Christ that gives me joy, the same Christ that gives me peace is the Christ that gives me the promise. All the promises in God, of God, in Christ are answered, which means they're already been answered. You're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. I think I said that when I was talking about my testimony. I was waiting on God to heal me, but God was waiting on me to believe what he said. You, you, you got to catch up to God's promise because they've already been answered. Yes. Past tense. It's already yes. All right. So he says this, all the promises of God in Christ, they are already answered. Yes. So what do I do? What do I do, Pastor Tim, if they've already been answered? So through him, then all we have to do is say amen. If it's yes, then I say, so be it. If it's yes, then I say, I receive it. My amen says, God, whatever you say, I'm going to live in it. I'm going to walk in it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I don't see it, but I'm going to live in it and walk in it. And that's my amen to your yes over my life. And God is saying here in the scripture, look, it says to the glory of God, which means that when I say amen to his yes, he gets the glory. Well, how does God get the glory? When I worship? Yeah, he gets the glory when you worship. Oh, does he get the glory when I praise? Yeah, he gets the glory when you praise. Does he get the glory when I pray? Yeah. Does he get the glory when I come to church? Yeah. But you know when he really gets the glory? When you say amen to his yes. When you say amen to God's yes over your life, that's when he gets the glory. Because then you're not just singing the song. You're living the song. It's not lyrics that you memorize so you could sing them. No, it's their lyrics that you live in. When I see the cross, I see freedom. I'm living in that. Why are you always smiling, man? Because they don't know this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Why are you always happy? It, it, everything always going great. No, honestly, it ain't going great today. But I'm smiling because I still got the victory. Man, I thought you were sick. Yeah, I'm not feeling my best, but I'm smiling because I have the victory. Why? Because I'm saying amen in my actions to God's yes over my life. I may not have it yet, but it's coming. And I can lay on the bed and I can watch SpongeBob SquarePants. And I ain't got to go, when's it coming? Some of y'all going to go home tonight and watch the episode. I feel it. I feel it. You're going to lay there and you're going to be like, oh, it's coming. It's coming. You got to get crazy like that. You got to get. The Bible said we're peculiar people, which means that we're weird. We praise in God when folks think we should be fighting. We thank in God when folks think we should be cussing. No, I'm different now. Why? Because I believe in God's yes. So I'm saying Amen. In traffic, I'm waving at people. I used to try to pull people over. Now I'm waving at them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Why? Because I'm saying amen to God's yes. Can you bow your heads with me? Father, you've called us to victorious living, but it requires the development of habits. Habits that speak to the fact that we have to be focused. 
So, Lord, help us be focused by maturing us in your word. We're victorious because we have the divine right to rule because we live in the authority of Jesus. Because of that authority, we no longer have a slave mentality. As a matter of fact, you've called us friends. He said, because a servant, a slave doesn't know what his master is doing, but we know what you're doing because you've already spoken the yes over us. And we say amen. Have it, number three, God. We're going to rest in your yes. We're depending on your yes. We're relying on your yes. Why? To be the overcomers that you've called us to be. To be the conquerors that you've called us to be. To be the fathers, the mothers, the husbands, the wives, the brothers, the sisters. To be the worker, the employer, the employee. To be the citizen of heaven here on earth. So Lord, we live in your authority. We live in your truth. Your truth. That we have the right to rule. Not the right to abuse, but the right to rule. We have authority and we have victory. We leave here tonight with the victory. We go home with the victory. We wake up with the victory. We go to work with the victory. Everything that we do, God, left foot in front of the right foot. We walk down the street. We walk into our destiny with victory. Why? Because we have victory because we believe that you, Jesus, are the Christ the son of the living God. And we give you praise in Jesus name. Let's give him a praise offering in Jesus name.